Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm Sheep Sweet and today I'm gonna teach you how to breed crickets. So breeding crickets is actually honestly pretty easy. The most problems people have is keeping crickets alive. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now keeping crickets alive is fairly easy. I keep mine in a 10 gallon tank just like this. I put egg, car egg cartons in there. And then I put some soil and leaf litter. The leaf litter is there in case they get hungry and I don't have anything in there at the moment. The one thing, crickets die really easy. And a lot of times when you get them from a pet store, they're just already dehydrated from transit and whatnot. And crickets are gonna be loud if you hear them. I'm sorry, but I feed mine carefully carrots, romaine lettuce, oranges, um, all kinds of stuff, they'll eat it. I, lots of fruits and vegetables. A lot of people feed them the little cubes. Don't feed the cubes, they're pretty, like they lack moisture and the crickets get moisture from the fruits and vegetables that you give them. So that's what I feed mine. They live perfectly fine and I breed them, obviously, as you'll see in the video, uh, perfectly good as well. So the substrate you can use for the cricket bottom just to house them is the same substrate. Now you don't have to use substrate at all, but I do. Um, so you can, so you'll need one of these as well. And what this is, is an egg laying bin. Now, is it really a registered egg laying bin? No, it's not. This is a glad container. This is a sandwich container you get it at Walmart. This one's like a mermaid one. I got it on sale, just a glad container. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some repti soil in there. Honestly, you could use like cocoa fiber if you want as well. I don't really like cocoa fiber so much. I use repti soil. You can also use Zilla's jungle mix. And what I like to do is I like to mix a little bit of sand, like repti sand. Repti sand, I like to probably mix like, I'm talking a little bit, maybe like a quarter of a bag. So like just this top right here, in with it, wet it down, get it moist. And it makes a very nice substrate for the crickets and for anything that needs a tropical type substrate. So I'll put that on the bottom of my cricket containers. I also put isopods in there to help eat up the cricket poop. That really helps on smell. That really, like my cricket containers do not smell at all because my crickets stay alive and the isopods eat the poop so you don't have a smell at all. And a lot of people are always like, oh my God, how do you stand the smell? And I'm like, there really is no smell at all because the isopods and I keep them fed so they don't die and we're totally good. You don't have to worry about smell at all if you do that as well. And you want a sandwich container that's relatively short. And the reason why you want a short one is the crickets need to jump on there, run, the female crickets at least, need to go up there and lay their eggs into the soil. And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put the soil, the repti soil, inside this container. You can fill it up about halfway or even up to the top. I just fill mine up as close to the top as possible, but leave some room so that way when you put the top, it's not smushing the top. You need like a little bit of space. And I'll show you what I mean. But I will fill that to the top and then a female cricket, which looks like this. The female crickets, adult ones will have like the long, looks like a uh, antenna sticking out of their butt. And the males will have wings. Now, the how the males attract the females is the wings. That's what makes the noise. Like right now, you're probably hearing it. That's the male crickets making noise. They like move their wings. And my lights went off if you saw that, sorry. But so if you, that's what makes the noise is the male crickets. So the females, once they have the eggs, they will come and they'll run across this. Every light in my room is just turning off right now. <laughs> and they'll just implant that little stick out of their butt and lay the eggs in the soil. And you, I usually, when I get this, I will put it inside of the tank, the 10 gallon tank. Now you don't have to use a 10 gallon tank, obviously. You could use like um, some tubs. Some people like to use tubs. Whatever you use, make sure it has a lid on it like this right here. You need a lid on it. 10 gallon tanks are at Walmart. That's where I get mine. Cost me like 25 bucks for the whole thing. Now inflation has gone up, so I don't know how much it costs now, but like before, all you would need, this the screen top was like $12 and the tank itself was like 15. So yes. 12, like $25, I'm sorry if I'm not doing math right. <laughs> so you leave this in there, I leave it in there for about two to three days to let them really go on. You can leave it in there for like four days, five days if you want to, but two to three days, that's perfect for mine. I leave it in there and they will run across to lay their eggs and then I take it out and if it's dry, it kind of has to be moist. If it's dry, spray it down and then just seal it. You don't want any holes in the top of here because once the crickets hatch, they will come out the top. They're very small and if you have any holes in there, I don't have any holes in mine. Some people like to get like, um, it's almost like parchment paper where they're like, air can get through but it's not like, holes in it, right? And they like put it over the top if they cut a hole for ventilation. I do not at all. And to make them hatch pretty quickly, you wanna store them in something that's around like 80 to 85 degrees. They will hatch regardless of that. If it's even like 75 degrees, they'll hatch. It just might take them three to four weeks. But I usually put this on top of my enclosures, like the one behind me, I'll put it on top because the heat rises in my room and it's like 80 to 85 degrees up there. And when I do that, they hatch in about two weeks, 10 to 14 days usually they'll hatch. The last one for this video I made, they hatched in 18 days. So it really depends. And the eggs will look like little rice, little pieces of rice inside of the, uh, the sandwich 
container. Oh my gosh, I cannot speak for this video, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, once you put them in here and they're gonna hatch, the important thing is if you look in there you see them all running around, when you get your new in a 10 gallon tank, because you don't really want to put the babies with the adults, the adults sometimes eat the babies. So I have a tank for my adults and a tank for my babies. One important thing you want to do when you put your crickets in here, the babies, very tiny babies, is you want to put something along the top, like right here. And what I usually do is I get some packaging tape and I'll put it on the inside, I'll wrap it all the way around. So that way, because the baby crickets are actually able to climb up the silicone on the sides and they'll climb up and climb out. So you want something to keep that keep them in. You don't want them escaping after all the hard work you put into it. So that's what I do. I just get some scotch tape, some packing tape, and I put it all along the top. Some people do like Vaseline, that works as well, but sometimes they, they'll climb up, get caught in the Vaseline and just die. The packaging tape works great for me. And after about 18 days, they will hatch. And when they hatch, you can put them inside your prepped 10 gallon enclosure, open it up, let them run wild. And I usually leave the sandwich container in there for like a couple of days. That way any ones that haven't hatched yet will hatch later. And like I said, maybe a week, just leave it in there. And then after that, you can just dump out the substrate if you want to inside the enclosure or just take that, take it out. Um, and then you'll see them on the egg cartons, like in this video right here, you'll see all of them just kind of chill on the egg cartons and do the same thing. I give them carrots, I give them little pieces of romaine lettuce, little orange pieces and rinse and repeat. And that's how you breed crickets. Super easy. Crickets are actually really easy to breed and take care of. But I think the biggest problem is when people get crickets, they're so dehydrated and on the verge of death that when they get them home, they just die from the pet store. But I like to get mine from Top Hat Crickets. You can get them there, or you can get them on Pangea Reptile. And I just start off with a thousand, so I can all, like I can, I get a thousand, I can feed my lizards and whatnot. And then also it'll start a really good colony off of the thousand crickets I got. And then it just kind of rinses and repeats. So a thousand crickets, Pangea Reptile, it's like, I, I will say it's like $35 now. The price has went up in crickets. Back in the day, it was like 15 bucks. Then it went to 20 bucks then it went to 25 bucks now it's 35 dollars it's just continuously getting more expensive but you don't have to get a thousand you get 500 crickets that'll obviously be what you get 250 crickets 250 crickets you're going to be good enough because only you only need a couple of females and a couple of males and you just need the females to lay the eggs and once they lay the eggs you can start your colony off pretty well but i like to get huge numbers and make sure that i have the stock that way i could feed them off and get my uh new colony set up very well and the crickets will grow to adulthood a little bit slower you know don't expect them to like just immediately be adults in a week or two it's going to take a couple months for the process to start back over and kind of like kick it over and you know you know you get like a self-sustaining colony of crickets and whatnot but yes i hope you enjoyed this video if you did like and subscribe and i'll see you next time